I did not start this journey thinking I will work on pain. I was a student at Oxford. I had uh, received a Rhodes Scholarship to go from India to Oxford. And my um, supervisor wanted me to study hormonal and metabolic effects of anesthesia in babies who are born by cesarean section or by, you know, after some co kind of anesthesia being given to the mother. Um, and when I started reading about this subject, I found that uh, there was very little known about anesthesia and its effects directly given to the baby. So I started working on this area. Also, um, as a junior doctor, I was taking care of um, uh, critically ill babies in the newborn ICU. Um, and I found that whenever they went for surgery, they came back with extreme degrees of shock, uh, extreme degrees of clinical instability. And so I was quite puzzled as to what is happening in the operation theater that is resulting in this degree of critical illness in babies. I decided to study this and um, decided to look at the stress response of newborn babies. Um, undergoing surgery and anesthesia. And my initial expectation, my hypothesis, was that babies don't have much of a stress response because their endocrine system is not developed. Uh, when we actually measured the hormone and metabolic changes, we found that their hormonal response was five times that of adults who are undergoing similar surgery. So that was very surprising. I said, is this because the baby is very sensitive to what's happening in the operation theater? Or is it because of something we are doing to the baby? So that's when I started going with the baby from the ICU to the operation theater. And I found babies were receiving large dose of muscle relaxant uh, medicines. So uh, basically they're paralyzed, you know, unable to move. Um, and, um, and their body was being cut up and, you know, operations were being done with minimal or no anesthesia. So I was very surprised when I saw this and, and I said, this can't be right. It doesn't look right. Um, and so uh, we designed some randomized clinical trials. Uh, basically, we did some clinical studies where we uh, assigned babies to two different groups. One group got the standard anesthetic approach. One group, grew up, the other group got uh, more potent anesthetic drugs appropriate for the level of surgery being done. And we found these babies who got appropriate anesthesia, they had reduced stress responses, but they also had much greater stability and less complications after surgery. So this was a, a very major finding at that time. This was first paper was published in 1985 and it caused a big impact in medical science. I think the research that got started out looking at hormonal metabolic stress responses, after a while, while talking about this, people ask, so what happens? So what if the baby has increase in, th in the hormone levels or changes in metabolism? What does this mean? I mean, it doesn't mean anything. And that's when I started thinking about if the baby is feeling so much stress, releasing such strong hormonal responses, then could it be that the baby is feeling pain? And that's how by accident, I got into the field of pain research. At that time, the um, traditional knowledge was babies don't feel pain. They don't have nerve fibers that are myelinated or you know covered with a myelin sheath. They don't have the receptors, etc. Uh, and so I started putting together all the information and showed that all the elements that you need for pain perception are actually developing quite early. Now, many years later, we know that babies feel pain. 
that in fact they're more sensitive to pain than older children or adults. In fact, the highest degree of pain sensitivity is in the newborn baby. And gradually that sensitivity to pain decreases until you get to adolescence. And then it stays stable throughout adult life. And as you start getting older, your pain sensitivity gets even more. That's the way the pain perception occurs throughout the lifespan. When we looked at premature babies, and this is not just my work, many other teams uh, did this work, um, where they found that the threshold for pain in premature babies was actually one third that of full term babies. So that they were three times more sensitive to pain for the same type of pain, for the same pinprick or, or whatever is same incision, same chest tube or whatever is being done, they have much greater sensitivity to pain in the premature babies as compared to full term um, infants. So if a premature baby is so sensitive to pain, why is that the case? Um, why would the pain system develop so early and be so strong in early development? Well, it has a survival advantage. So the two things that the baby will react to, one is hunger and one is pain. And those are the only two things that are necessary for a baby to ensure survival. And so they develop very early. So if a premature baby feels pain, then could it be that the fetus also feels pain? Um, and this is a vexing question, I, I can assure you, because many people think of pain as a flip switch, that you go to a certain point in development and suddenly you switch on the computer and the baby is, uh, the fetus is able to feel pain. It doesn't happen that way. If I was to take a metaphor, it is more like a dimmer, where slowly the capacity for feeling pain develops very slowly and increases, becomes to the point where less painful stimuli will still be perceived as painful stimuli. So that it may be that early in gestation, if you have a crush injury to your entire leg being crushed, for example, that may get through to be registered or perceived as pain. But um, a pinprick may not be registered. At a later stage, you know, maybe uh, the crushing injury, a cut in the skin, et cetera, may be perceived as painful. But again, a pinprick will, or a needle stick will not be perceived. Then you get to a point where the pain system is fully functional. So it's more like a dimmer switch that slowly turns on the sensitivity to pain. There's also biological variability so that, you know, every child doesn't walk at the same age. Every child doesn't start to read a book at the same age. There's a, a huge variation. So that same biological variation occurs in utero, in the fetus. Some fetuses may develop this capacity earlier. Some fetuses may develop it later. That, that is, you know, just logical. So um, I cannot say at what point in time that a fetus will be capable of uh, uh, pain perception. Suffice to say, on average, um, by about 20 to 22 weeks of gestation, um, all the structures are in place that would allow pain to be perceived by the developing brain.